we can now add authentication and authorization and all its endpoints like register, login, change password, etc. to a web API easily in under 10 minutes. Let's see how. I will create a web API in .NET 8 as I usually do. I will click on this create a new project button. After that, I will select the ASP.NET Core web API template and click next. Then I will give a name and a location for my project and click next. And finally, I will select .NET 8 as my framework and keep all the settings as it is and click on the create button. Once the project has been created, I will go ahead and install these NuGet packages. I would definitely need this one over here, which is Microsoft.ASP.NET Core identity.entity framework core. So this is common. After that, in this example, I'll be using the in-memory version. So I'll be installing Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.inMemory. But if you want to do this on the SQL Server, you would have to install these two packages, one for SQL Server and the second one to run migrations. So I'll go ahead and install the NuGet packages. I'll come over here, right click on Dependencies, Manage NuGet Packages. I'll go to the Browse tab and search for the first package I need to install. And once that's done, I will install the in-memory package as well. So now that we have installed some packages, we want to do some plumbing work for entity framework core so that we can connect the uh, this application to the database together for that we will first create the identity db context so i will come over here create a new folder i will call it data and inside this data folder i will create a new db context so create a class and i will call this auth db context.cs this class that we have created inherits from identity db context and it comes from the packages that we just installed so identity db context press control dot or control period and use this using statement on the top the identity db context also takes a type of user a t user and in this case we will write identity user and this identity user also comes from the package that we installed once that is done we will create a constructor for this class and we'll also use the base constructor so i will come over here i can create a constructor myself or i can use the shortcut so i'll click over here press control dot or control period and generate the constructor with the options parameter so by default i will get the constructor and we are using the base constructor over here and also passing the options if you're using a sql server uh, database you have to go ahead and add the connection string over here but i'm using the in memory one so i'll skip this part and i will first configure this db context in the program.cs file so let's open the program.cs file and let's add this or inject the our db context into the services on the top over here insert some new lines and over here i'll write builder dot services dot add db context and this is of type auth db context the one that we created and you should import your using statement over here after that we will use the options such that and over here we'll say options dot use in memory database because we are using in memory one if you're using a sql server you will say use sql server database this method takes a name for the database so you can say auth db and finally use a semicolon to end the statement after that we will add the identity services to the container so we'll use builder dot services again and we'll use the method add authorization the next thing we want to do is to activate identity so we'll use builder again so builder dot services dot add identity api endpoints of type identity user and this is the same user that we used inside the db context and after that we'll use the method add entity framework stores and the store that we are going to attach this authorization is the auth db context that we created so these are the three lines of code that we want to add in the services the final step over here is to map identity routes so we'll scroll down over here after the app has been built we can now come over here and say app dot map identity api and this will do all the magic of type identity user again so in all, we have these four lines of code that goes inside the program.cs and that is it. Apologies for stopping the video in between, but I want to share that I have created this amazing course on Udemy on ASP.NET Core Web APIs. And this has been the most loved course on this topic and tens of thousands of students have completed and loved this course. If you want to master ASP.NET Core Web APIs, then this is the course for you. I have a discount coupon and that is in the description of this video. Make sure to check it out. All right, now let's get back to the video. It's now time to test the solution and when we run our application and open Swagger, you can see that 
Apart from the weather forecast API, we also get another endpoint which has a lot of methods or action methods inside it. And we get the register API, we get the login API, the refresh, confirm email and every other API that is available to us in identity. And you can see that inside the code, we only still have one controller. So everything is happening behind the scene and the identity API or the identity packages that we installed is doing all the heavy lifting for us. Let's use this endpoints to register and then log in as a user and to register first we will use the register API and we'll send the email and password in. Now I've given an email and a password and if I click on execute you can see that it'll throw me a 400 bad response error. So by default all the exceptions and you know the request validation is, is working for us you know in built. The error also says that the password is too short, the password requires a non-alphanumeric character, um, requires one lowercase and requires one uppercase. So let's fix that as well and this is by the way all configurable and we can configure that in the program.cs file but that is uh, a video for some you know other time and if you want to see that you can just let me know in the comments down below and i'll try to make one as well so i've changed the password and now if i click on execute this should register a user for us so we get the 200 success response so that means our user has been registered so i'll copy the object so that i can use that in the login response so i'll click on login try it out and the login has a different kind of an object. It requires email, password, two-factor, and recovery code. We haven't configured that, so I'll remove that, and I'll just paste the email and password. And we also have two settings over here, which are use cookies and use session cookies. We won't use that at the moment, but let's execute this. And if we look at the response, we get the 200 back, so that's good. We get the token type as bearer, and we get the access token. It expires in that many minutes, and we get the refresh token as well so if we copy the access token this is the token that we need to authenticate our uh, client side applications like angular application or react application or a simple javascript application so this is the access token that we need and we can use postman over here to test this api out but it would be nice to have the authentication process built in swagger as well so let's make some changes to our code now to add the uh, you know a way to add better token from swagger we have to come back and make some changes so we'll open the program.cs file and over here we have the add swagger gen method over here and we'll make some changes over to this method we'll introduce the options so options such that and inside the options we will use some different methods so options swagger doc we'll just define the document first it needs some name so let's define it as v1 and after that it needs a open api info object so new open api info object and over here it needs a title so title is equal to let's just say auth demo and after that it needs a version so version is equal to v1 let's close this then we will use the add security definition method so again options dot add security definition inside the method the first argument that we want to give is the bearer and this will be new open api scheme and in this one we have the in parameter so where are we sending this and this will be in the header so we have to say the parameter location so we want to send the token in the header then we have some description you can call this anything you know please enter a token then we have the name of this and we want to send this in the authorization header so we will say authorization the token always goes inside the authorization header then we have the type for this so type is equal to security scheme dot ttp and after that we have the bearer format which will be jwt so jwt and finally we have the scheme again and that will be bearer so by this way we have added the security definition and finally we will add the security requirements so options dot add security requirement method and inside that we'll open a new object so new open api security requirement object inside that we'll create a new object and here we will new up the open api security scheme so open api security scheme like this one and in here we can say reference is equal to new op open api reference which needs two things one is the type type is reference 
reference security dot security scheme and then finally the id is equal to bearer right all of that is good after this new object we want to just uh, new up an array which we don't want to pass anything but that is the requirement of that object over here so this is what we have and by adding these definitions for the security requirement security definition we have configured swagger so it's now time to test it out and see if we can add the bearer token from swagger itself now it's time to log in so let's copy the object again and let's go to our login uh, endpoint paste the object and execute to get the bearer token so i'll copy the bearer token the access token from here and i'll go to this log sign which says authorize and it is asking for a value so paste the uh, access token that you have copied and click on authorize click on close and now if we go to any of the other let's say the weather forecast api let's click on try it out and execute you can see that in the request that we are sending to this api we are now also sending the authorization header which is the value of bearer space and then the access token that you copied so this is exactly what we wanted and we are basically trying to replicate a client that is sending us this access token and by getting this access token we want to identify if this client is a known client and have they logged in and are they using the correct resources or not so to test out our endpoint as well i will go to the controller and the weather forecast controller we only have one endpoint which is over here so i will use the attribute authorize over here and by using this authorize attribute i'm basically trying to restrict the user from calling this method if they are not authenticated and authorized so to test this out i will just quickly build my application again coming over here i will now click on authorize click on try it out execute and you can see that i get a 401 response back that means i am unauthorized and that's because my application reloaded i don't have any access token over here but i still have that copied so i'll paste it over here click on authorize and now if i do execute this request again let's say the client is doing it for us if i execute that i get a 200 response back and all the data i wanted to need so you can see how easy it was to add authentication and authorization into a new asp.net core web api or an existing one for that matter you know by using the identity packages in dotnet 8 it's now become really easy for us to have all the endpoints available to us and also get the jwt token i hope you like this video if you did please like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you can get more content from this channel thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one